Yes, thank you very much. We are indeed joined here by Sir Paul Judge, who's the president of AMBER itself. Sir Paul, welcome. Thank you well, for your good time. Good morning. Let me start by asking you very simply, what is AMBER? What's it for? Well, AMBER was started in the late 1960s by a group of eight MBAs who came back from America and thought that there should be more business schools in, in Britain and the world. And its purpose for the last 40 years has been to improve graduate management education. So how do you go about improving education? Well, you make sure that the schools are, are of good standard, that they have proper admissions criteria, have good faculty and diverse faculty, and that they have good career advice for the, the students, as well, of course, as giving them a good and varied education across all the disciplines of business and management. It's an increasingly crowded marketplace out there, isn't it? How hard is it to sell a school on the idea of independent accreditation? Well, we don't really find it hard. Um, we have many schools who wish to become accredited by AMBER. We are really the gold standard around the world. Well more than 200 schools now in over 70 countries, more than 800 programmes in those schools. So it clearly is a very popular uh, way of accrediting a school and raising the standards and also being able to tell people that it is a good school. So talk us through the accreditation process. What sort of hoops does a potential member have to jump through? Well, we have an accreditation guideline, which is on our website, well published, that's been honed over many years by many deans and directors of business schools and by independent people and businessmen. And so it really reflects the very best that is possible. It requires such things as the number of hours of tuition that there need to be how much teamwork, what the quality of the faculty should be, what the facilities should be, the premises, and all of the advice that students need as they go through the course. Now, of course, you're not the only independent accreditation body out there. How hard is it to compete within your own industry? Well, there are other accrediting bodies, but we have by far the biggest global spread. We're not concentrated on one region. We're not uh, particularly struck by a philosophy of a, of a home set of business schools. We are multinational and we have on our board and on our accreditation board deans, directors and businessmen from all over the world. As a UK-based organisation, are there problems persuading schools on other continents, perhaps even in other languages, to sign up? Not really, because Amber is a charity and London is a very good place for charities to be based. The legal framework and things like that make it uh, very flexible and schools accept that around the world. British education is seen of, as itself of being a high standard and therefore it is aspirational for many schools to reach a British standard. MBAs are a growth industry, aren't they? There are schools popping up all the time. How do you persuade them that they need your input at all? It is competitive. There's something more than 10,000 business schools in the world. Some, I regret, are not that good. And so the 200 plus that we have are really the top business schools and business schools around the world want to aspire into that group. What sort of relationship exists between fellow AMBER members? Are they collaborative or do they compete? Well, they're largely collaborative, although, of course, they do compete in the sense for the best students and the best faculty, but they don't compete directly. And, of course, being worldwide, uh, there's a geographical dispersion as well. Now, on a topical issue, the number of female MBA graduates is still woefully low, isn't it? What are you doing to address this? Diversity has always been an important area for us, uh, not only of the students with the faculty, and the number of uh, female students has increased markedly. Well, when I went to business school many decades ago, it was less than 10%. Uh, it's now way up, and in many schools now, it is more than 50%, uh, especially in the Middle East, uh, Eastern Europe, there's more than 50% of the students are female. Now, finally, are there any regions of the world which, in your view, would particularly benefit from more MBA schools? There are plenty of opportunities in many countries. I wouldn't like to single out a particular country, but um, there are business schools being formed out of universities or independently by businessmen all around the world. And as they get better and as they attract more students, then, in fact, they, they will be uh, eligible for accreditation. But if one takes a, a very positive side, uh, China, where we now have uh, over 20 business schools accredited, uh, there has been a huge growth in China in the number of business schools and that we have a number still queuing up to get accreditation. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Sir Paul, and providing us with that 
brief overview. Thank you.